All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Call of the Wild, the Angler. We are in South Africa, and we are going to grab up all of the collectible items. I'm assuming this is all of them. They're all the ones that I could personally find. Uh, so if you're looking at my map, you can see I've got markers placed down, right? These markers here, these peach-colored ones, those are where you can find caches, and there's a lot of them. And I probably have not found all of the caches, but there's quite a few. Um, the blue stars, those are our collectibles, so that is where we're going to head. We're going to go north to south, so we are on the northernmost tip right over here. This is where you're going to find one of your um, lookout towers. So our first one is going to be over here at the Asegi Outpost. And where was that one? I can hear it. I forgot where it was. Which is messed up because, like, I was literally just here. I think it was over on the back side. I think it was over here. It's here. I should just press track, it would help. Right. So this is why I mark things down, yo. If you guys want a video on the cache locations, let me know, and I will certainly do one. Again, there's no way to track, though, how many you get. So I don't know if I've got them all or not. But here is our first one, the cheetah. The cheetah is a large cat native to Africa, Central Iran, and India. It is famously the fastest land animal, capable of running up to 61 miles per hour. However, it normally chases its prey at only about half that speed. After a chase, the cheetah needs about half an hour to catch its breath before it can eat. Unlike other big cats, the cheetah cannot roar. However, in return, they can purr. Cheetahs' bodies grow to around 3.5 to 4.5 feet long and possess a tail measuring up to 2.4 feet. Unlike most other big cats, cheetahs hunt in the daytime, climbing a termite mound or small hill to use their sharp vision to locate prey. Cheetahs have distinctive dark tear mark lines that run from the corner of their eyes down to their mouth. These marks deflect the sun, making it easier for the cheetah to hunt during the day. All right, so that's Cheetah. So we've got that one done. I'm just going to leave the marker there. Next up is going to be down here. This is one of the three caves that are on this map. And if you're coming over here, I highly recommend you come over to this cache because there is a free reel, a fishing reel in that one. Right, so we're going to come over here to... Ubunyama Cave? <laughs> yeah, right. And if we come right down in here, this is one of your photo ops. There's a cache right there. And right here, we have, what do we have? Leopard. The leopard, also called the panther, is a large cat closely related to the lion, tiger, and jaguar. Leopards can be found in sub-Saharan Africa, Northeast Africa, Central Asia, India, and China. Most leopards can be recognized by their light color and distinctive dark spots called rosettes. Rosettes camouflage their bodies as they move through the grass and trees. Black leopards, which appear to be almost solid in color because their spots are hard to distinguish, are commonly called black panthers. Leopard cubs are born with barely visible spots and are hidden by their mothers and move from one self location to the next until they are old enough to begin playing and learning to hunt. When cubs are about two years old, they live on their own, but maternal bonds are strong and hard to break. 
and offspring sometimes have reunions with their mothers. The leopard's body is slender and muscular, reaching a length of 36 to 72 inches, with a 26 to 40 inch long tail and a shoulder height of 24 to 28 inches. Males typically weigh 68 to 159 pounds and females 45 to 95 pounds. Right, so um, here's our next one. So we go over to Shisha Niyama. And that brings us to our next marker here. It brings us to the Elland. The Elland is a large savanna and plains antelope found in East and Southern Africa. The eland is the largest African bovid, but the slowest antelope. When walking, the tendons in the eland's foreleg produce a sharp clicking sound, the cause of which has not been widely investigated. The sound can be heard up to a mile away and is a good indication of an approaching head. Some scientists believe it may be a form of communication. If a male is walking through the territory, the clicking may alert another eland. It can only run about 25 miles per hour, however, can jump 10 feet from a standing start. An adult male is around 5.2 feet tall at the shoulder and can weigh up to 2,077 pounds, with a typical range of 1,100 to 1,300 pounds. Yo! <laughs> Are you kidding me? So, you're looking at at minimum 1100 pounds a ton a literal ton can jump 10 feet from a standing start that is insane that is absolutely insane who we have here Johnny Taco <laughs> Oh shit. So our video is getting interrupted. We got Johnny Taco in the house. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Johnny Taco is another content creator. He's over on Twitch. Uh, Johnny the Taco. Check him out. And he left. <laughs> oh man, too good, too good. All right, he probably realized that I'm making a YouTube video, I don't know. So uh, our next one's gonna be in the Dino Park, which we showed in a previous video. So we'll go ahead and track that one. And we're gonna go to the Dino Park Outpost. And we are going to go get this guy. So I will say while we're while we're moving over in this direction, my only gripe about this map is that there's flipping gear challenges. I hope we were I hoped that we were done with gear challenges, but apparently we are not. I hate them. I absolutely hate them. But anyways. What do we have here? An ostrich. Alright. Ostriches are large flightless birds. They are the heaviest living birds and lay the largest eggs of any living land animal. They stand up to a massive 9 feet tall and weigh as much as 350 pounds, which is around 3 feet taller than the average man and heavier than two men combined. 
with the ability to cover 16 feet in a single stride and run up to 43.5 miles per hour, they are the fastest birds on land. These brilliant birds' strong legs don't just carry them where they want to go. They are super effective at self-defense. If an ostrich is cornered by a hungry predator, such as a lion, cheetah, leopard or hyena, they can kick with a force powerful enough to kill. Each two-toed foot is armed with a four-inch sharp claw for added punishment. All right, so our next one is going to be all the way down here by the Cradle of Mankind. So we'll hit track. Where exactly? I did hit track, did I not? I guess I did not. There we go. So unfortunately we can't actually go inside any of the buildings either, which... I mean, it's a disappointment, but, you know, I get it. This one's gonna be on top. And getting the stairs here, here we go. You just go all the way to the top, and there it is. What do we got? An Oribi? The Oribi is a long-limbed and long-necked antelope found in eastern, southern, and western Africa. It stands 20 to 30 inches high and weighs about 31 pounds. The Oribi is the only dwarf antelope and perhaps the smallest ruminant, a grazer, and browser that eats foliage, herbs, and forbs when palatable green grass is unavailable. It derives sufficient water from its food to be water independent. Oribis leave their territories to visit mineral licks, lawns of short grass created by larger ruminants, and post burn flushes of vegetation during the dry season. When annual fires remove all cover, loose herds of up to a dozen form. But, Lacking the cohesion of sociable species, the members scatter in all directions when put to flight. All right. Our next one, we're just going to come over here, and then we're going to slide over. So our next one is going to be this guy here. And this is going to be at the Hengel and Visvengreri Club. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I am not good with this language. I, I don't know what I'm doing. It says this is a club. This one's not completely built out, so there's no fishing challenges or anything yet. Which is interesting. But what do we got here? We've got the springbok. The springbok or spring buck, is a medium-sized antelope found mainly in South and Southwest Africa. A slender, long-legged antelope, the spring buck is up to 28 to 34 inches tall at the shoulder and weighs between 60 to 93 pounds. Both sexes have a pair of black 14 to 20 inch horns that curve backwards. The spring buck is the national animal of South Africa. The common name spring buck comes from the Afrikaans word spring for jump and buck for antelope and the first recorded use of the name dates back to 1775. All right, there's the springbok. Next, we're going to go to the big hole, which is right here. And we'll just go to the big hole marker. I don't know if this was a good idea or not. It put us all the way at the bottom. It's all right. And there is a cache in this area as well, towards the top. All right, what do we got here? We've got the hippo. The hippo 
hippopotamus is a large semi-aquatic mammal native to sub-Saharan Africa. They are considered the second largest land animal on Earth, with adults averaging 3,300 pounds for bulls and 2,900 pounds for cows. Hippos measure 9.5 to 16.6 .6 feet long, including a tail of about 1.15 to 1.84 feet in length and 4.3 to 5.4 feet at the shoulder, with males and females ranging from 4.6 to 5.4 feet and 4.3 to 4.8 feet tall at the shoulder, respectively. Despite its stocky shape and short legs, it is capable of running 19 miles per hour over short distances. Males measure around 11.5 feet long and 5 feet tall and can weigh up to 7,055 pounds, that's as much as three small cars. Hippos are most active at night when they forage for food. They are herbivores and eat mostly grass. In just one night, they can consume up to 77 pounds of it. All right, that's the hippo. Moving on, looks like, as of right now, looks like we have three more. I might find more, I don't know. So we'll come down here to the radio tower. Right, let's see, where are we? Okay, there we are. Apparently it did not track it, but that's okay. Because it's right over here. And we have the Impala. The impala or roibok is a medium-sized antelope found in eastern and southern Africa. The impala is one of the most common and graceful of all of Africa's antelopes. A slender, agile creature, it can clear formidable obstacles running at speeds faster than 37 miles per hour. They are deft runners who can leap up to 32 feet long and 10 feet high. They use their tremendous speed and agility to avoid predation and also seemingly for fun. Males are known as rams, while females are hornless and referred to as ewes. Male impalas have lyre-shaped ringed horns, which can measure up to 2.4 feet long. The male's horns can take many years to reach full length, which is why young animals are unlikely to establish a dominant position or breeding territory. Male impalas produce a scent from a gland on their foreheads to advertise their status to rivals. When they lose their rank, a male produces less scent. Males will fight for status and territory throughout the mating season, using their antlers as weapons. Most young impala are born around midday, as this is the safest time to give birth, since most of their enemies are resting. Half of newborns are killed by predators within the first few weeks of life. The name impala comes from the Zulu language meaning gazelle. All right, that was interesting. Then we're going to come over to the Sunrise Country Club, where we're going to get our next marker. Did I grab... Oh, I didn't grab all the missions from this board, I don't think. We got the zebra. The plain zebra is an African equine with a black and white striped coat. Scientists have debated for over 150 years as to why zebras have such stripes. Theories range from camouflage or a way of signaling members of their species to methods of regulating their temperature. The most likely theory, however, is as a form of pest control protecting zebras from flies. By comparing zebras to horses, their closest living relative, scientists have found that horses were bitten by flies disproportionately more than zebras under the same conditions, leading them to conclude that stripes are far more than just decoration. Although zebras can make noises, they also communicate with each other through facial expressions, moving their ears, sniffing and widening their eyes. When zebras greet each other, they stick their ears straight up and push their faces forward. 
When they are frightened, their ears push forward, and when they are angry, their ears pull backward. At night, zebras can lie down to sleep to reach a deeper REM state of rest. However, if they're sleeping during the day, wild zebras will sleep while standing so they can be alert in the face of danger. Zebras can run up to 40 miles per hour. After six minutes of being born, zebra falls can stand. After 20 minutes, they can walk. And after 40 minutes, they can run. That's actually really impressive. Newborn zeb zebras are running within an hour of being born. That's just crazy. Did I grab all these? I did grab them all. Okay, cool. Alright, so our next one is going to be over here. By the, uh, we're going to call it the Ivan Dam. <laughs> because, yeah, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Got a little bit of a walk ahead of us, but that's all right. So yeah, as I was saying before, um, my only gripe with the game is the gear missions. And one of the hints, or one of the, I don't know, pro tip that I can give you guys when it comes to gear missions is to, when you're doing a fishing mission, a location mission, something like that, gear up for the gear mission and you can knock out two at the same time so actually we'll just give you a uh... so what you want to do is you want to find like we got small mouth, small mouth gear challenge right which you're gonna get a silver or higher um... use a spinning rig Oh, good. It doesn't make us use the stupid uh, line stuff. Okay, so this isn't actually... Oh, this one does. This one does. Okay. So I would set up... If you're going to do smallmouth, I would set up for this one here. So you're using this line. Use a spinning rig for it. So you're going to set your... your your gear up for this and you should be able to knock out this as well because this requires a spinning rig so you're gonna activate those but you're going to check where these are first so you're gonna activate this challenge first go to that location and then or you guys get what I'm saying right Jesus these are the gear challenges um let's see are these all just the gear challenges do your location challenge right so you're gonna activate your location challenge so smallmouth bass silver rank or higher at the marked location you're gonna activate that go to that location then you're going to come over to the gear challenges and set up for this. So you're in the right location. The fish are going to spawn. And then you catch it with this. You'll knock this out and you'll knock out one of these challenges as well. That's the best way I can tell you to do it. Um, if you do it individually, it's just going to be long and tedious and painful and you're going to hate life. And I know because I did that in Spain. <laughs> I did it the hard way in Spain, and I regret every moment of that. <laughs> I shouldn't say I regret it, but I wish I, I would have done it the smart way instead of doing it the hard way. But I did it the hard way because I thought I was going to do videos on it, and I decided not to. So we'll see. I might do videos on this map. I don't know. I, there's just no real reason to because it's all pretty self-explanatory but if you want videos let me know I'll do them let me know in the comments right so we've got this guy here what do we have we've got the diker I never even heard of this
Adaka is a small to medium-sized brown antelope native to sub-Saharan Africa, found in heavily wooded areas. Common dikas are omnivores, typically eating the leaves and shoots of bushes and fruits and flowers that feeding birds have dropped to the ground. They also dig up tubers and roots with their hooves. Common dikas may eat insects and even lizards, frogs, rodents and nestling birds. Occasionally they may eat carrion. Dikas form monogamous breeding pairs, meaning that one male mates and lives with only one female. Females are known to produce young at any time of the year, with gestation lasting four to seven months. A female will seek out very secluded and thick cover for birth. Newborns are well developed when born and are able to run within a period of 24 hours. Both parents look after them. Young are weaned at two months of age and reach adult size in six months. Females attain reproductive maturity at eight to nine months and males at 12 months of age. In some African cultures, the common diker's horn is made into pendants that are believed to ward off evil spirits. The common diker's call of alarm is a nasal snort. It bleats loudly when caught and this sound will attract other dikas. It is believed that eight different races of the common diker exist. Their varied coloration may mean that they met their specific habitat. Male common dikas have a pair of small horns and in some places it is typical for females to also have them. African rock pythons have been known to die by their stomachs being pierced by the male dikas' horns after swallowing them whole. Antelopes have scent glands for leaving marks of their presence. Dikas will press their face gland against each side of a dika of the opposite sex in mutual marking. Alright, so as you saw, that was all of the collectibles. Um, I'm really surprised because I would have figured there would have been other sets because on all the other three maps there were more than one set of collectibles with South Africa they brought it down to one set and there's only ten. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. yeah there's only ten um, and they're not really that hard to find guys they're really not if you do the photo challenge the very first mission that you get you will come across all of these I guarantee it you're gonna come across all of them this one right here, if you do it's a snap. It takes you throughout the whole map, which is good. And you'll find all of these uh, collectibles. So, um, we do have more missions that I'm going to do. Um, search for and Dilly's Gift. I mean, we can do that one, Taking the Spear. I'll do a separate video on this one, quite possibly. This one should be up north. Yeah, so it's going to be up north. Wait, what is it? Show that you have what it takes to make the cut at a Sagai Tackle. Should we just check it out? Let's just check it out. I mean, this is kind of a long video anyway, so it can't hurt, right? Oh, I need to, uh... Remove this marker. Right. I'm, I'm curious. My curiosity has been strucken. He's been struck. So, what do we do? Search for the gift. Like, what? Oh, okay. That's so we got it. Nice little nice. wheel for ya. Let's see it catch something. Oh, so this is gonna be another build a rod and reel type thing. So we got the real, uh, huh, all right, um, which is, it's got to be that one, the stew rad. Use a spinning rig, use the, no, okay. Let's. Okay, things are a little bit weird here. 
Because I did get two brand new reels. We did get the mint, so I guess we can check out the mint while we're at it. How's it? How's it? Right, so if we come here and we go reels. I, why do I have this? I don't recognize that one. Othello, Belta, Creo, Scope, Optic, Hun, Touch, Huggo, Blue. Why is the blue prince orange? <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, we've got this. Oh, okay, I know. This was, um, this must have been one of the uh, DLC packs. Festivus for the rest of us. So it's this guy. So we've got. It's actually not too bad. It's not bad at all. Huh. Okay. And then let's see if we can't find the mint, because that's the other one that <clears throat> I got that's brand new. This one here. Baitcaster. Not great. It's a medium, medium level bait caster. Wouldn't be too bad. All right. And um, you know what? I mean, we're here. Let's see if there's anything that I don't have. I think I've bought everything. Well, I don't have this. Sure, I'll buy the Nexus. <laughs> Do, 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 do. I don't have this. I gotta be level 90 to buy that. Oh, okay. Not quite there yet. I haven't bought everything on the line yet. Maybe I should, right? Um, anyways, guys, uh, that's all I'm gonna do here. Uh, actually, before we do that, let's look at apparel. Is there anything new in apparel? No, not in the boots anyways. Nothing new in gloves. Nothing new in that or that. So yeah, we're going to have to wait until they come out with uh, region-specific gear, it looks like. Because we don't have everything. <laughs> oh, we don't have that. Why don't we have that? All right, vehicles. We got all the livery for that and all the livery for that. Okay, right. So I'm just gonna go up, buy up all the line because apparently that's all I'm missing right now. And um, yeah, if you like the video, guys, hit that like button. If I've earned it, hit that subscribe button. And as always, be safe, be cool, and have fun. We'll catch you in the next one.